Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this uh, second session of the Pediatric Urology Interzonal Competition for this webinar. I welcome all the faculty. But before we start, I have a very sad news to share with you people. Yesterday night, we lost one of our very senior members of the Urological Society of India, Dr. Haribai Patel, who was uh, a well-known uh, urologist, and he has uh, contributed immensely towards the growth of the USI in the initial days. He was uh, uh, a part of the committee which uh, was looking into the constitution along with Dr. Venugopal, and uh, he had he was the uh, you would always see him in the front rows in the annual general body meetings, giving his expertise on the issues which are related to the constitution. He always worked for the interest of the USI. It's uh, sad that we lost him yesterday. And uh, on behalf of the Urological Society of India, we have conveyed our condolences to him. May God uh, rest his soul in peace. I would request all of you to pray for him. And with this sad note, then I would uh, allow this webinar to continue. I would uh, invite Dr. Rajiv Sood to give his opening remarks and then we proceed from there. Dr. Sood. Yeah. So, should I speak? Yes, Dr. Sood. Okay. So, uh, with this sad news sharing, uh, actually, uh, with, with this heavy heart, we are starting today's uh, second uh, episode of our interjournal competition in the pediatric urology. The first episode was uh, really... Um, uh, really uh, something to watch and uh, we are we are uh, sure that uh, after all this competition is over we will be enriched our treasure will be enriched with the pulse of pediatric urology which is guided by Do professor vinu gopal sir and also dr anil takwani has a very uh, carefully crafted the whole program along with the team of the pediatric subspecialty. So, without uh, wasting any time, today in uh, North Zone, uh, another set of teams and East Zone, they are going to participate and after that we will be left with 12 teams. We are going to be halfway through with the today's uh, episode of competition. This, is, uh, very, this has become very popular. Everybody is praising it. And uh, I think tempo should uh, go on like that. And with this, uh, I hand uh, this back to uh, Dr. Kesha to proceed. Thank you, Professor Sood. Uh, now over to Dr. Anil Takwani to conduct the proceedings from now on. Over to you, Dr. Anil Takwani. You, you have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, now I'm allowed to unmute myself. Oh, sorry. Right. So, I'm audible now. Dr. Kesomurthy. You're audible. You're audible. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So, in between, my, I was not able to unmute myself. Uh, so, uh, once again, a warm welcome to all of you. As uh, Dr. Kesomurthy said that uh, we lost our one lot uh, a teacher and a professor. So, uh, and we have given a, a, a meeting, uh, uh, this thing uh, to him. And uh, we go out, we have to, life has to, life has to move. The show must go on. And in that circumstances, uh, we welcome you all in the second day of this uh, uh, very exciting uh, students and teachers uh, webinar on the theme of we do pediatric urology. And if you see the today's uh, program and the program, you can see the varieties of topic this uh, is brought to discuss. So it will be even difficult for the experts to raise the very relevant questions. It will be a challenge for the faculties also, expert faculties. So today we have a six uh, plus uh, seven, which was left out in presentation of Monday, that is from Dr. Man. So seven presentation, again, six minutes for presenting four minutes for discussion. And Dr. Rahul Kapoor, you will be very strict to follow this time. Rahul, you are there. Rahul, you have to make sure that you give warning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am there. And 
this today you have to see that at 4 minutes when the discussion is going on you have to say 4 minutes complete in that sense the who is responding you will start winding up his response right so will not exceed more than 4 minute and 15 second at the most right second uh, uh, thing is that uh, which i wanted to just convey the chronology we have already given uh, the uh, presenting the students so they know the chronology uh, and with that uh, i just want to uh, welcome my uh, experts and today we have a professor venu gopal once again dr pramod reddy will join from the cincinnati children hospital we have a professor amilal bhat entering hypospadiologist from the jaipur uh, or very much uh, uh, we love all all him uh, who love hypospadios surgery and then we have a professor patak head from the nair hospital uh, we have a chandra chandra is busy in the again uh, some covid related uh, last minute administrative work so he will be joining on, uh, as soon and then we have a dr sanjay pandey uh, from the kokila bendiruvai ambani hospital uh i don't know i'm not able to see sanjay right now i hope that he will join uh and with that uh, uh we have a uh, our own committee members dr prasanna dr malikarjun dr rahul and dr uh, udesh shankar chatterji with a small uh, introduction i once again welcome to all of you uh, our teachers office bearers uh, dignitaries uh, all faculties and all presenting uh, is and their mentors in this exciting contest of pediatric urology with this uh, i invite the uh, first speaker for today that is dr uh, rakesh man to share his screen and he is from uh, uh, kothari medical college uh, research institute bikaner and he is going to speak on the female epispadias repair his mentor is dr ruchir airan dr man your time starts now good evening everyone respected teachers thank you for uh, thank you for giving this opportunity uh, myself dr rakesh man presenting on surgical reconstruction of female epispadias i have nothing to disclose the aim of this presentation is to demonstrate excision of cleft of urethra urethra reconstruction to attain continence excision of glabrous skin and genitoplasty to achieve aesthetically acceptable genitalia this is a very rare anomaly with which occurs in one in around 5 lakh female births davis has classified female epispadias into three varieties with increasing severity namely vesicular subsymphysal retrosymphysal retrosymphysal is the most severe one which involves entire length of urethra as well as sphincter majority of these patients present with urinary incontinence since birth physical examination reveals bifid clitoris flat mons pubis cleft in urethra at 12 o'clock because of incontinence and lack of bladder sizing bladder may be thin to small and vr is present in around 30 to 75% cases this is a case uh, i am going to present a 6 year female with subsymphysal epispadias with urinary incontinence this is the video of uh, with subsymphysal epispadias this is histogram this is pre op this is the typical appearance of female with initial incision outline this is excision of labrous skin of the mons pubis This is tapering of urethra with dorsal resection of the veins of the tissue. We have inserted ten French catheter. This reconstruction of urethra over a catheter with suture.
this denudation of the medial aspect of labia minor and clitoris. We are closing initial. This is the initial layer of mouse closure. Now we are uh, approximating labia minor or urethra. We are close, first layer of mass. This is second layer of mass closure. Rakesh, last one minute. Uh, this is the um, on review literature. Uh, we found three different series of 10, 12, and 6 cases respectively, and these are the results shown in. Um, we have done five cases in last five years at our institute, and out of which uh, four patients out of five they are in, in, in continent. Take home message. This is a rare anomaly. It presents with incontinence and classical clinical features. Surgical reconstruction can achieve continence and cosmetically acceptable genitalia. After surgery, continence continues to improve over a few months to two years. Patient with VOR and incontinence, even after surgery, they require ureteric reimplantation and bladder neck reconstruction. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rakesh, uh, for your uh, presentation. So it is a rare uh, case, uh, but well presented. Uh, uh, with this, uh, your time for the question and answer starts. Rahul, you notice the time. So first, let us uh, start I'm with good. Dr. Amilal Bhatt. Sir, Amilal Bhatt, unmute yourself. Sir, unmute yourself, please. Uh, Dr. Mahan, how will you get continence? What are the factors which are responsible for incontinence in female epispidias? And how will you get continence? So, in addition to that, so you can answer two, both together. You have a two cases, probably yeah, four yeah. cases of subspace, sub epispidial, mm -hmm. right? In that, you have a two continent and two socially continent, means relatively incontinent. Why it yes, is sir. so? And what you can do for those cases? So, we exercise. Sir, we expect to between three o'clock and nine o'clock. No, then... you have a second device there. Stop second device. Start. Sir, we expect to be Why you people are not agree and believing me? Okay, go ahead. It is still going here. Yeah. Is there any second device near you? No, it is going to. 
Are you able to see uh, Amilal but are you able to listen Rakesh clearly? No, not at all. I'm uh, not able to listen. Sir, uh, yes, you show. Okay, go ahead. Sir, the excision of left uh, between two o'clock and nine o'clock. Uh, second layer of the approximate media and the Sir, I am very much disheartened, Akesh. Despite we give this much of time for trial run, where is the problem? Uh, sir, it no. might be internet. I think, internet. Uh, I, I think he's using external mic and he's using, uh, two, yes, external mic he's using. Are you using, uh, Rakesh, are you using external mic? No. No, sir, I'm not using any mic. Now go ahead with the answer. No, yeah, yeah, now tell. Go ahead. We are getting your voice. Go ahead. Uh, Sir, we excise the dorsal cleft of the thera between nine o'clock, nine o'clock and three o'clock, and then we uh, close it. And then uh, second layer, uh, we also close uh, uh, subcutaneous tissue that present uh, uh, over the months. But we have brought it immediately, and by doing this, we you know. You see, what you are telling is the general part of uh, mons plasty and genitoplasty. What did you do for the continence? And you got continence in partial and two were incontinent. So was it a single stage complete repair? Or you will go for the continence in second stage? The single stage. Mons plasty and genitoplasty. Uh, sir, uh, at our institute, sir, we have got four symphysal sim cases and uh, we have done uh, in, in a repair in single stage and patient. Uh, patient That's why I am asking what are the factors for continence and what you did for the continence? Question is very clear. Your answer should be very precise that these two are the possible reason for the continence or incontinence. These two things we can do to avoid the incontinence or to treat the incontinence. Sir, uh, dorsal cleft is, is the region for incontinence and we have, we have excised that. So, by excision of the cleft and approximate uh, betting the urethral margin, we achieve continence, sir. No, no. Factors for how continence. Exactly, uh, how, how, can, you, can you tell us, can you tell us the, how the female gets the continence? Means what, what exactly the urethral resistance in the female, which makes the female continent? Apart from the bladder neck, what exactly the uh, role of urethra? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, sp uh, sphincter, uh, sphincter, and Doctor Ansari would like to ask a question. I sir joined doctor, late. Sir. I jo I joined late, so uh, okay, I think fine, it's... fine. I can understand, Doctor Chawla. We have a time. Uh, uh, where is uh, no question? Rahul, Rahul, do we have a time? Okay, no, the Rahul is a, okay. Should fine. I put uh, more questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, put one more question, please. What, what, what are the other associated anomaly? Uh, sorry, uh, so, sorry, sir, sir, I am not able to hear. What, what about? Other associated problem with female epispedias which you have projected as penopubic or sub sub epispedial. So we are it, we are representing thirty to seventy five percent cases pubic diastasis and pubic diastasis and we are okay. Does anything okay, sir? Uh, we diastasis? okay, sir. Okay, uh, we are uh, closing this. Uh, particular presentation time is up uh, now before we move to the we second presentation i request the, one the paper published from the spmc medical college sir i am coming to you sir sir i am coming to you first let us finish this uh, particular close the presentation see this okay. pre let me declare the presentation is close judges can put their marks right once the i hope the judges are knowing that 
the what exactly their job let him complete the mark now before i ask something else i would like to again request the bikaner team please please don't be in the same room if you want to remain in the same room all three with your mentors please don't switch on on multiple devices it is echoing you are losing the excellent chance you have excellent material your presentation is so beautiful your video was so excellent akesh i am really i am working with you since last 2 3 days requesting you people doing trial run it is you you, you believe me that my time is also extremely valuable all experts times time is also very much valuable we are online till i am wasting some of time right but i i would like to repeat with the two bikaner presentation you you have to you cannot repeat now the same thing which has happened with the rakesh audio is you don't have any see otherwise you will i are going to lose your time for the question and answer and we will have to cut short your audio and finish so it will not happen before before i move to the second presentation I want to bring your mentor where is your mentor Talk to your mentor on phone, um, Doctor Aaron. You are there, sir. Actually, uh, uh, Doctor Aaron is uh, busy here. I am with me. My head of the department and my mentor also, Doctor Mukesh Arya, sir, busy with me. Okay, okay. He is there. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, you come uh, on audio, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Sir, would like to see you. Good evening. Sir, how much uh, how much is the volume of work there? of a this kind of a rare cases uh, reconstruction there in the bikaner see five years uh, we have done uh, 20 extrophy and uh, 12 episcopias sir now you see once you are also answering we are listening you are listening to something really quick sir why it is so why why your your student or your people cannot work on this equipment Sir, why it is very smooth with the other presenters? Now, why not you? It is some net problem. It is a small place. Otherwise, uh, they are exactly following what you are saying. Sir, I request yesterday your student to go to the dean's office, corporate office, hospitals, whatever office which is having the best internet connectivity. Please go there. Right now, you are audible very well. Sir, go ahead. Go ahead. We have the fiber cable here. Sir, we would like to know your experience. Share From your that, experience. Last five years, I have done twenty extrophy, including two uh, adult extrophy. One female around nineteen years, she came, uh, and she was reared as male. To my utter surprise, when all external internal genitalia were female, and we did reconstruction, complete reconstruction, in stages, and now she is married, cohabitating, having bladder capacity of more than two fifty cc. and she is on cic last uh, five years i have done more than 20 male and female episcopias and my results are very satisfactory and recently we have published our results also in annals of urology and Sir, have you have you examined any any specific genetic uh, or environmental problem which is responsible for the high volume of this kind of a disorder there no actually we we get so much uh, so many referrals uh, because not many people are interested in reconstructive surgery so we get uh, referrals from the far and near from other states also i get referrals okay 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 fine uh, dr bart you wanted to ask something before we uh, go to move to the second presentation i know just i wanted to tell that uh, you see there are factors for incontinence means bladder neck length of the urethra pliability of the urethra and sphincter which are lit apart and the four same we have uh, published earlier mukesh was also there we have published there our uh, female episcopias uh, which is published and that is referred in campbell also double breasting of the bladder neck and urethra for continence and single stage repair probably they have missed it they have not even referred in this case series where they have put the references and that makes means reconstruction of urethra getting the adequate length of the urethra and then this fintroplasty because when you do mons plasty along with that you will have to go for this fintroplasty and that will make the female incontinent 
epispheres as a continent continent world so that's what what my comment another factor which remains is about the bladder because if they present late so large one bladder capacity becomes small most of the time when you do and patient is continent bladder capacity will increase and they do very well still only problem which remains with the single stage perineal repair is that many cases there is reflux if there is a re Sir? reflux pers persisting then that has to be dealt with that is what my comment is okay thank you very much sir for this very very much appropriate and apt uh, comments uh, thank you very much we move to the second presentation and that is from this uh, uh, zone and that is uh, again from scb medical college katak this is dr zaid khan sorry sorry this is uh, extremely sorry this is dr kishor Okay. and his uh, mentor is dr sabisa ji panda and uh, they are talking on the laser versus cautery in view valve fulguration so they are the focus on the topic is that uh, they are converting these two energy source uh, for the valve ablation so you can share your screen sure so, उसको स्टील की मिर्ची है उसका उसका वो मुकेश सर यू कैन यू कैन अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ सर किशोर यू शेयर योर स्क्रीन मेक इट टू स्क्रीन या गो हेड टाइम स्टार्ट्स नाउ गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन I am Dr. Kishore with my mentor, Dr. Sabesuji Panda sir from uh, SCB Medical College and Hospital Katta, Odisha. With my topic, early outcome following diathermy versus laser ablation of posterior urethral wall. Uh, aim is to study the early outcome following the PVV ablation, laser versus diathermy. I am presenting the topic with starting with introduction, followed by modalities of ablation, post-op care, and follow-up complication, comparative studies, and at the end, take-home message. Starting with the great Hugh Hampton Young, who described first endoscopic diagnosis of uh, urethral obstruction that he termed posterior urethral wall, and classified the wall into three types. Type one being the most common in 95 percent of cases. After the diagnosis uh, is confirmed by BCU, um, BCUG, the patient is posted for cystoscopy with wall ablation. That is the preferred surgical option for PUV. Goal of the treatment is to restore the uh, flow of urine through the urethra and enable the normal cyclic filling and uh, uh, empty the bladder. There are uh, there are various modalities of PUV ablation, but among these, we uh, in our institute follow the holmium laser ablation and Bugbee electrocauterization. Uh, about laser, holmium IZ laser is a versatile laser with multiple soft tissue application of wavelength two one four zero nanometer. Depth of penetration is limited to 0.5 to one millimeter. It makes it makes it relatively safe. It has a superior qualities of soft tissue ablation and uh, hemostasis, and reepithelialization occurs without any scarring. This is the laser fiber that is we used. Uh, 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 there is a uh, four years baby uh, that is a boy that is diagnosed uh, as a PUV on BCUG uh, and posted for laser aberration uh, last month in our institute. About diathermy, we most common uh, most commonly used diathermy is a monopolar in uh, PUV ablation. That is the current using is purely uh, cutting current. Yeah, and it takes two to four weeks for healing. And it has a lateral thermal effect, which uh, leads to destruction of the surrounding tissue. We use Bugbee electro that incises the wall at five and seven o'clock position, uh, and with or without twelve o'clock position incision. These are the instruments that he, we have in our institute for pediatric uh, wall ablation. Uh, we do prophylactic circumcision at the time of wall ablation. In post-op, we follow. We put the catheter for forty-eight hours, and after forty-eight hours, we remove the catheter, give trial, and discharge the patient. After one month, we do ultrasound, we use serum urea creatinine, serum electrolytes, and after three uh, months, we do repeat VCUG along with ultrasound, serum urea creatinine, electrolytes, and urine reports. Uh, we uh, usually in, in intra-op. We use have to face the bleeding, which leads to loss of vision. Uh, we uh, sometimes face excessive ablation, urethral injury, external uh, sphincter injury. In early post-op period, there may be a hematuria, urinary retention, incontinence, urethral stricture, residual wall, and residual hydronephrosis and residual VUR. Uh, this is the data we have in last two years in our institute. Total 14 cases that uh, undergo uh, seven undergo laser ablation and seven undergo Bugbee ablation. Among seven that undergo Bugbee ablation, uh, two is having uh, hematuria, one is having uh, residual wall, and uh, one is having urethral stricture. There is no case uh, that having incontinence. As compared to the diathermy, laser, laser is having a lesser time of uh, catheterization, a lesser time, a lesser stricture rate, lesser hematuria, as a lesser depth of penetration. That's why more safe as compared to the diathermy. Uh, 
uh, about the literature and studies we uh, i am putting in the first study that is comparative study of holmium yg laser uh, versus electrocoagulation that uh, from uh, by swarnindu uh, mandal ital that concludes that pu fulgration by laser is a simple feasible and effective alternative to the primary uh, electrofurgation and with having similar success rate and fewer complications the second study that are quoted in the uh, that is published in the societies of pediatric urology by george van ital it also concludes that primary uh, holmium laser ablation is safe effective in the context of uh, renal preservation with in high risk patient preterm boys and low preterm babies and low birth weight babies uh, this is the third study that are quoted in published in indian journal of urology by dk gupta from ems new delhi it also concluded that endoscopic laser fulgration is a technically feasible even in neonates and small children with additional advantage of fulgrating the ball in small caliber urethra as this can be performed with a small available cystoscope that having a side channel uh, the uh, fourth study that are quoted is fulgration of posterior urethra wall using nd vise laser in pediatric surgery international in 2000 year by v bhatnagar et al they also said that destruction of the balls by nd vise laser is a precise there are fewer complication and it can be practiced on a daycare basis without involving catheterization the last study that are quoted is laser ablation in the management of prostate uropathy in neonates in the, that uh, published in the journal of endo urology in year 2015 by mathu pagano et al it also concluded that holmium laser ablation appears to be safe effective and efficient alternative management Uh, uh, in the management of urethral walls, uh, and the laser remains as important alternative to electrosurgery in this population. Uh, at the end, take home message will be: the laser ablation of PUV is feasible, efficient, and effective alternative to diathermy with similar success rate and fewer complication rate. Eight long-term uh, larger sample size studies are warranted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kishor, for uh, uh, excellent presentation. Finishing in time, you can stop sharing your screen. uh i'm going to come to dr chawla so chawla sir you remain ready because uh, you had a yeah. couple of queries but i think uh, the okay. voice is improved much on the in compared to the monday but before i go to the you i want to bring professor ansari first recently they published a paper on the structure uh, following the post wall uh, this fulguration or ablation now sir uh, uh, not to that you have studied everything in detail related to this particular presentation plus uh, put your question the kishor yes yes kishor i am uh, i just want to wonder in uh, what are the problems with the ablation of a postural wall with laser the technique you tell me two technical difficulties with laser why Sir, if, it, if it is so advantageous all you narrated whether it is a ndr or formium leg why it is not so popular all urologists are having homium yag in their pocket but still it is not being used you tell me two technicalities dr chawla sir. is very uh, he is also very happy with my question sir first is a laser fiber is uh, there is a over vibration sir vibration uh, wobbling effect of laser fiber sir yes. uh, that is not static fiber is not static that's why and uh, it is not engageable in the wall so in what and then sir, why, uh, why it is then why why do you justify that is better than the bugbe sir um, bugbe is a silent uh, we, bugbe is a silent passive wherever you put it yes. it will remain there sir, vibration but, uh, uh, yes laser fiber is just like a running horse yes sir but sir uh, the, according to the, the complications we get urethra structure and uh, in uh, you have to tell uh, me the another uh, problem with the laser i asked two technical sir, problems with the laser it's cost Uh, is it's cost cost sir. that is not a technical that is a logistic sir uh, 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 sir there is a vapor bubble sir that's why leads to the uh, uh, sir ima uh, uh, glaring. Uh, glaring effect in the uh, vision vision problem sir vapor vapor bubbling sir that leads to uh, vision problem then even then you justify in your concluding remark that is better than any uh, any other modality sir there are vapor bubbles but the lifetime of better vapor bubbles is may very much little and uh, that is uh, safer than uh, electrocauterization so how small baby you have done fulguration uh, we make sir, baby have you come across and uh, no sir in our in... okay no so sir what kind, we... of, what kind of instrument modification which can give you a, a improvisation in the your uh, on the side of the urethral trauma or stricter formation 
in compared to the standard electro cautery electro cautery ablation so i didn't get no see what are the what are the instrument advantages you have uh, in the laser ablation in compared to the electro cautery sir uh, we can uh, use uh, laser in the small caliber you uh, see the small size this is the smallest the caliber instrument you have in instrument which is the smallest caliber instrument you have in your institute sir nine french sir nine french is the it's a much bigger uh, and anything sir, can six, be done six so six french nine six. french for the uh, wall ablation no nine sir french. six french sir are you sure yes the six french नहीं आई आई एम हैप्पी दैट ये डॉक्टर तकवानी आज मेरी पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन वो दे व्हाट इज द अदर बेनिफिट्स ऑफ लेजर व्हाट इज द स्मॉलेस्ट साइज द स्कोप थ्रू व्हिच द फाइबर कैन बी यूज्ड 1.9 फ्रेम सर स्मॉलेस्ट साइज स्कोप न्यूनेटल स्कोप व्हाट इज द साइज ऑफ न्यूनेटल स्कोप 6 फ्रेम so you know the advantage but you don't know exactly the answer uh, that's a problem right uh, dr chawla last question from you yeah uh, sir, i four minutes are over yeah i just quick one question yeah. uh, all your patients uh, were beyond the age of one year what is the justification <laughs> of doing circumcision in all the patients sir uh, we uh, the most of the patients are from remote areas sir in our scb katak sir the the uh, the time at which they came with uh, came to us are recurrent uh, in uti and sepsis sir and one follow up will take 3 to 5000 for each follow up sir patients that that's why we routinely perform circumcision in uh, every patient sir then okay. the uh, one final question if you yes. have bleeding how do you use the laser for securing hemostasis must know some okay so this is time is up otherwise so uh, 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 thank you kishor for your presentation and uh, before uh, uh, judges put the mark uh, marks let us go to the you know uh, uh, dr chawla only dr chawla what exactly the instrument you are using uh, in your institute for the uh, routinely for wall ablation no, my 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 favorite is uh, with the diathermy hook only Uh, that is, I I prefer to engage the valves and see how I am going to uh, use this energy to ablate the valves. I go step by step from peri from the center to the periphery and uh, without uh, 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 causing a collateral injury to the mucosa. So engaging the valve with the hook electrode is easy for me. I I find it very useful. And Doctor Ansari, what do you think uh, in your particular study? Uh, you have your own cases as well as cases came from the others other places so according to you what are the reasons uh, exactly responsible for the stricture formation following the wall ablation it is over zealous wall fulguration instrument uh, limitations technical issues by the uh, person who is doing what, what? Uh, yes i think uh, it is uh, there are multiple reasons for it it may not be the, uh, only one the technicality one the expertise of the surgeon second is the size of the instrument third is the size of the catheter not only the size of the catheter but the material of the catheter all these three things have been found to be culprit in the causation of the strictures any relevance with the uh, energy source cold knife versus uh, electro cauty versus uh, uh, laser I, I, this cold knife has been used uh, in the department long long ago now we are using right angle electrode and i find it excellent because the only instrument through which you can clearly engage these valves is the right angle electrode you use pure current just with one or two bites the this uh, valve is gone regarding uh, this uh, cold knife cold knife is also as a very attractive alternative but the problem with cold knife is that if the valves are thick and fleshy which is there in nearly 30% of the cases you have to apply it so many times so many times you injure urethra rather than taking away the valve but your message should be that we should avoid the stricture because uh, I, as you concluded in your paper treating the strictures are extremely extremely difficult yes anil i would like Absolutely. to add one thing is duration of catheter also many time people keep for a longer time catheterization and especially if the patient has come in sepsis and for me there are two things i use uh, i have all three for with the availability 
but still the hook and second one is many a time we have resectoscope also the child population which the presenter has had would have been both one because uh, if they can use a resectoscope also in resectoscope also if it's a, a large valves that can be resected even so that okay. is the advantage so, of this one before we close this uh, the, the presentation is closed i i would like to dr sabya sachi is listening all these things dr sabya yes, sachi sir. being a mentor you know, we would like to hear you for, uh, some comments from you sir uh yes sir good evening sir good evening good uh sir in our institute uh, we deal uh, uh, majority with the electrocoagulation and uh, to part with laser recently we have switched over to laser and uh, as you said uh, definitely the laser uh, the technically it is bit more uh, challenging compared to the electrocoagulation but for a comparison we have uh, switched over from electrocoagulation to the laser over the last 3 years when we got the our uh, laser machine in our institute but uh, to for uh, we have not done uh, uh, less than one year in front we are not doing because we have a post surgery center here itself for pediatrics where all the patients of post surgical bulb are effort for uh, progression if they are less than one year old they go to the pediatric surgeons directly they have, they have got pediatric urology department separately so sir we have not much uh, experience on the so, less than one year is, that is also a very yeah. very much uh, a very 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 important point which you have put forward and most of exactly. the time i hear this comment that uh, when the child is very small it is in the department means it is with the gynecologist or pediatricians in neonatology department generally they go to the pediatric surgery uh, department yes. uh, dr ansari why it is so it is i cannot go to the yeah. pediatric urology uh, yes. department uh, for this uh, urology it is because of the atmosphere which we have been created by urologists over the last 5 uh, decades uh, we did Anil. not take it. yes <laughs> yes patak sir yes patak sir i yes, tell you yes. something very very interesting yes sir. you know uh, we have a very good rapport with the uh, pediatrics department and uh, it so happened that all the urology references started coming to us but Uh, the pediatric surgeons they threatened the i have i have to use this word because they said see if you start referring uh, all this to urology then the uh, we will not attend to your pediatric general surgery emergencies so you know that was the actual thing so you know the pediatric department re literally retracted and uh, you know we had a consensus i said okay uh, refer to them no problem as and when you want to address to us you refer to us but you know because finally what happens pediatric general surgery emergencies form a big chunk and it is good for that pediatric uh, department to be in you know good liaison with pediatric surgeon so these are you know small small things which matter in an institute also uh, i think only one only one point is good effort yes sir sir last comment no uh, uh, dr ansari was mentioning about the catheter i just uh, just uh, want to know from him if his infant uh, Uh, we have not put other than feeding tube uh, does he have a different opinion um, for infant after well fulguration yes for neonates for neonates i uh, i also prefer feeding tube but uh, mm -hmm. after for 5 6 month they can tolerate easily uh, for uh, this foley catheter for so neonates so which, si which size for, you will put 6 french 6 french 6 french 6 french silicone catheter they drain well Yes, and for neonates usually catheter they they might create problem because of inflation of the balloon. The central lumen sometimes get occluded. Uh, my preference is still infant feeding tube. Yeah, that no. same goes same. better. That's perfect. I think Doctor Chawla yeah. wanted to ask uh, Doctor Ansari mentioned that the stricture rate is related to the mm -hmm. catheter. Yes, so yes. the choice of the catheter. So I think precisely, sir, you want to ask, na? but that depends on the material if you have a good quality control material branded catheters then the chances are less but the problem is that the pilferage of the old catheters and use mm. of this uh, poor quality of latex that is basically uh, uh, amounting to higher incidence of fissure as oh. uh, supposed to be that is okay. no uh, no just much, uh, uh, a few points only yeah. my only thing is uh, infant feeding tube if i have to keep it for longer i won't use catheter which is a balloon i'll use a splint which we use for hyperspedia that is a ptf splint for your professor that 
Yeah. That is uh, exactly the, what we also follow at our hospital. So we close this discussion and we move to the third presentation. It is again excellent presentation coming from the Bikaner once again, uh, Dr. Anko Singhal, under the mentorship of Dr. Mukesh uh, Arya, presenting on uh, partial urogenital mobilization of urogenital sinus. Very interesting topic. Uh, uh, you can share your screen, Anko. And see yes, that sir. your audio works very well. Yes, sir. So that you see that all the devices are off. Yes, sir. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay, sir. Some background noise is still there. Okay, go ahead. Okay, sir. Uh, a very good evening to all the senior faculty members. I am Dr. Ankur. I am here to present my presentation of partial urogenital mobilization under mentorship of Dr. Mukesh Arya, sir. I have nothing to disclose. Since our aim is to identify and classify the patient presenting with urogenital sinus and to demonstrate its key elements in its surgery. Now, for the urogenital sinus, it is a rare anomaly and it is a common channel for both the urinary and genital tracts, and every case should be evaluated as a DSD. So, classification of urogenital sinus is given way back by Hendon in 1969 on the basis of confluence of vagina and urethra. It is considered related to bladder neck and not the external meatus. For the evaluation, we should do a proper history and a thorough clinical examination along with blood investigations, including hormonal assays, electrolytes, and karyotyping. Radiological investigation are done to define the confluence level and association with DSD. Endoscopy is the gold standard. Now, for the vaginoplasty surgeries, there are mainly two types total urogenital mobilization, partial urogenital mobilization, given by Alberto Pina and Rink, respectively. Now, for the high confluence, it is of the rare variety. The risk of incontinence is there because the urethra is short. And to deal with that, urethra separation has to be done from vagina, which is the most difficult step because there is no obvious play. Now, for the deconstruction of short urethra, dundant skin of UGS is used and it often requires total urogenital mobilization in which the pubic urethral ligament is cut. Now, for the low confluence, majority of uh, cases belong to this category and it requires partial urogenital mobili mobilization in which the pubic ligament is spared. Now, for the redundant UGS skin is used to make the vestibule, there is no risk of urinary incontinence and surgical results are good. So, in our case, our case is a three-year-old female with part of a phenotype and physical examination had no palpable gonads. And blood investigations, uh, 17 hydroxypositron was marginally raised and karyotyping was normal. MRI revealed well from vagina and endoscopy revealed length of common channel was three centimeter and distance from bladder neck to confluence was four centimeter. Now this is the common channel as we saw in the endoscopy image. This is the stress which we put on the clitoris. This is the marking of the incision. Now this is, we are trying to develop the clitoris. Now this is the dissection of the urogenital sinus. Now here, uh, we are mobilizing the uh, common channel from the clitoris. Uh, we should keep in mind that uh, we should uh, be very careful on the dorsal side of the clitoris because it carries the neurovascular bundles there, which is very important for the ero erogenous activities. And it is a very, it plays a key, inter key role in sexual intercourse in the future prospects. So there were, there, that is why we did the ventral incision as described in the literature and thereafter corporal excision was done. Now here we are mobilizing the common channel up to the pubic root ligament. Now the vagina has been cut so that we can put flap into it. Uh, it should be, uh, the flap should be kept up to depth that is matches the proximal caliber because it is the distal vagina that is short. 
If we don't do that, it will cause vaginal stenosis, and which is the most common complication in this surgery. Now, it is the degloved skin that has been split, and which will be used for labia minora reconstruction. The clitoris has been fixed. Now this is the construction of labia minora. As you can see, this is the vagina in the urethra. As you can see, vagina is quite patellar. Now this is the mobilization of for labia majora reconstruction, so that to give it a more feminine appearance. Last one minute remaining. Okay. Sir. Now this is the completed vaginal plus picture. Now for the complication part, as I said, uh, vaginal stenosis and vaginal complication are the most common. Other complications include urethrovaginal fistula, lateral ins insensitivity, to name a few. For the follow-up, they should be followed up up to adolescent and reproductive age because due to vaginal complication and vaginal stenosis. Our experience is total three cases done over a period of last seven years, and we did not report any complication regarding to vagina as they have not reached the adolescent age. So the take-home message is: proper evaluation should be done before any attempted surgery. It should involve thorough clinical examination and history. Karyotyping and multidisciplinary team approach should be required if it, it is involves multiple systems. Surgeon should have prior experience and assistance to optimize the outcome, and it is the basic surgery for any feminizing genitoplasty. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, uh, Doctor uh, Ankur, uh, for this excellent presentation uh, and. Uh, Thank you, sir. Again, once again, when you get a warning, don't uh, get uh, uh, na, jittery. You can finish uh, with uh, uh, all these uh, 60 seconds. We are not going to punish for 15, 16 here. This is not for you, for other also presenters, that when you get a warning, don't be a little bit, means heavily uh, jittery. So with this, uh, we okay. are starting question and answer. Rahul, you have to stuck to four minutes. And let us open this question and answer with the uh, Professor Ansari. You put your first question, sir. Precisely. Ankur, uh, yes, Ankur, I would like to know your thoughts. How do you do we differentiate to what level we will go to total urogenital sinus mobilization and at what level we stop in partial urogenital sinus? How do we get an idea that this is the partial? Uh, so, first of all, for to get an uh, initial idea, we do a uh, genetogram. So, but, and then after, before just taking the patient to the surgery, we do a pre-op endoscopy. And then we mark the distance between the common channel to the external meters and to the sphincter. Because uh, uh, no, I'm things... asking intra intraoperatively. I'm asking intraoperatively. How? What are the structures you say that up to this level this is called as partial urogenital sinus mobilization? Uh, and beyond this, we are going to achieve pinna. Uh, as soon as the common channel dissection is started, we do it, we see how much the vagina is coming down and the common channel is coming down. If it is less, then we cut the pubic ligament that is located anteriorly as I have uh, as seen in the video. And if, if that is possible, so that it adds a little distance to the common channel and it is uh, further down. It is about further down. My question is straightforward. To what structure you will say, tell your resident that now we have reached to our limit. Beyond this, we will go to Pinna. How do you decide intraoperatively? You just keep going, dissecting and cutting tissues. There has uh, to be some landmark na? up to this level. Beyond this, I will not go. Otherwise, this will convert into total urogenital sinus mobilization. Uh, sir, the ligament is a very firm structure. It is seen. As soon as we cut it, we can see that it is the ligament. Why seeing the pubic level? as we have dissected the clitoris up to the pubis. Dr. Arya, you can take also this question. Actually, <laughs> before uh, uh, starting to do a genetogram and to see and see what is the level of confluence. The confluence is uh, measured from bladder neck to the side where urethra and vagina are joining. If it is low confluence, Usually, we don't need a complete urogenital sinus. We can do away with partial mobilization. 
so that is the factor that decides whether we will do total or partial so it's a distance between the eurogen this confluence and the bladder neck so it like that sir okay okay dr ansari yes i just uh, would like to ask uh, ankur's thought about what how do we differentiate between clitoral recession and clitoral reduction and what is the philosophy behind the two sorry sir clitoral recession clitoral yes, recession and clitoral reduction and what is the philosophy be behind the two clito uh, for the clitoral reduction uh, first of all clitoral reduction is Uh, it is again multiple devices. Can you carry it, please? Ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, sir. For the clitoral reduction and clitoral dissection. For the clitoral dissection, it is in the uh, part. I mean, it is not favored with all the surgeons because it gives a and it reduces the volume of the clitoris. But in the recent literature. uh the western literature mainly uh, because it is due to consent issues in the western literature has been raised so a lot of people are now preserving the clitoris so that they can reconstruct the phallus in the future age but in our scenario nothing has been uh, sought like this consent issue four minutes are over we have to wind up it's about the will of the parents and the guardians uh, who sought this surgery that is why we did a in this case as we did a clitoral dissection Okay. but so one uh, question uh, from any of the any of faculty interested to ask one question last question dr chawla dr bhat uh, prashanna uh, malikarjun anyone Can we close you, this Anil. presentation no, no question no question okay so your 4 minute is over as such uh, otherwise uh, thank you very much ankur um, thank you sir your participation uh, now we are seeing uh, dr pramod join from the cincinnati Pramod, uh, we welcome you. You can unmute yourself. Please unmute. So we Thank have Dr. Pramod ready, who is going from Cincinnati, and uh, you can say hi to your friend. Good morning, Dr. Pramod. Good morning, Dr. Pramod. I was just doing IC rounds and got delayed a little bit. So before I go ahead, uh, I would like to introduce my. international guest expert dr pramod reddy who is actually all of you oh, oh no no anil please. just keep going don't please just keep going but but, but just uh, the thing is that uh, uh, last year uh, because of his generosity uh, in a similar program the first hour for this webinar he declared the scholarship for the mentor of the winning team and the beneficiary was from the trivendram and uh, already the email is sent to him Uh, that he has to start preparing for the, his visit to the Cincinnati if the things are uh, remains favorable so far so corona is concerned so so, so thank you very much pramod and uh, your family your wife usha your your, your uh, charitable trust who has extended this uh, extraordinary scholarship and opportunity to our mentor who, who worked last year uh, very hard he is from the trivendram and he is happy and uh, already he received uh, your mail and he started preparing Uh, himself uh, it's my it's my privilege to be able yeah. to do that so, and to support so, the growth of pediatric neurology there i just want to say thank you to all of you yeah yeah other than this thank you to all of you i really appreciate it yeah we know we all know that he is uh, heading the department of pediatric neurology at uh, cincinnati children hospital which is a premium hospital in the usa and uh, oh, more than this i am not going to take much of time and we once again promote the with warm heart uh, welcoming you uh, very much thank you for uh, giving this time we know that you have a very busy schedule there uh, on both the side on this theater side as well as administrative side but as per your promise you have appeared on the screen and thank you very much for that joining us thank you i just want to say uh, thank you to all of you and uh, you know all of the trainees for working hard and putting this together and first of all i just want to say you guys are all frontline heroes for you know all that you've done in the past year with the uh, covid and i'm sad to hear that the second wave is going through india but uh, you know we just have to kind of uh, get together man up and uh, do the right thing and take care of our patients take care of each other so take care of our families and uh, thank you very much we are coming back to you once again uh, uh, 
uh, we missed you in this uh, excellent presentation which was on the urethral mobilization passive uro uro urogenital mobilization anyway you are now there and uh, dr karandeep uh, is uh, starting presentation is from the rml hospital delhi and he is going to speak on the bladder and prostatic uh, sarcoma uh, his mentor is dr umesh sharma so karandeep uh, you start sharing the screen meanwhile uh, professor yes. venugopal you can say hi pramod you can you can uh, hi pramod uh, hi how you doing sir how are you namaste i'm doing well well thank you i hope all's well with you and your family sir oh getting on thanks a lot for coming oh no my pleasure oh. i'm sorry i'm late Randeep, you can start your presentation. Your time starts now. You have six minutes. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, good evening to all. At the outset, I'd like to thank USA and ISU, the director, you know, the subscribers for giving me the opportunity to present this topic under the mentorship of my uh, uh, mentor, Dr. Mesh Sharma, sir. Now, uh, abdominal sarcoma was first described by Weber in 1845, and historically, surgical resection has been the treatment of choice. But with the advent of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, uh, now we have moved towards organ preservation regimen. Uh, it uh, accounts for about five to ten percent of all bladder and prostate abdominal sarcoma. It has a bimodal age distribution, with males being more frequently affected, and it is seen more commonly in patients who are or children who are born prematurely or out of assisted reproductive techniques. The cases are mostly sporadic, but can be associated with the underlying syndromes as well. Uh, histologically, it is of three types, with embryonal type being the most common, usually occurring in infants, and alveolar type being the second most common. but it has a more preponderance to metastasis and therefore has a poorer prognosis as compared to embryonal uh, another recent exciting development in uh, rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma is the uh, discovery of fusion proteins which occur because of gene translocation defects of pac3 and pac7 which are divided into fusion negative and fusion positive proteins with fusion negative proteins having a better event free survival and overall survival as seen in the ir study Uh, now, how does a child of rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma present? Usually, presents because of mass effect symptoms such as urinary obstruction and retention. Can also have urgency, frequency, incontinence, and later on can present with a palpable bladder mass as well. Preoperatively, we do imaging such as ultrasound, CT, or MRI. Metastatic workup has been advised such as CT chest and bone scan. But with the new COG guidelines, uh, any uh, embryonal category or a tumor less than five centimeters without nodal metastasis or lung metastasis, it can be avoided. Bone scan. The clinching diagnosis is by immunohistochemistry, where there is staining for especially myogen. Now, as these present, patients present with obstruction, usually we have to overcome the obstruction. For urinary obstruction, we put a perurethral catheter, and for ureteral obstruction, we usually do a ureteral stenting. Uh, because of the advent of organ preserving regimes, now biopsy has become important, and biopsy can be done either endoscopically or by open transcranial technique, or for large prostatic masses, plus guided biopsy can also be done. now coming to staging staging is effectively a three prong technique where pre uh, treatment staging is done then post biopsy or resection grouping is done and by combining the both risk stratification uh, risk stratification is done now according to the irs guidelines pre treatment staging depends upon whether it's of a favorable site origin whether it's a small tumor with lymph node present or negative or whether there is any metastasis at the time of diagnosis after that the grouping is uh, post resection grouping now because we are doing biopsies for these patients more often than resection they usually fall under group 3 and with these two combined we come to risk stratification where most of our patients come in the intermediate risk group now what determines the prognosis of these patients that is by the histology at diagnosis by uh, uh, at the age of presentation of these patients and whether at presentation have distinct metastasis and the size of the tumor at presentation also if we have been able to complete the sec the tumor that increases the prognosis in these patients now multimodality therapy is now the treatment of choice which has now progressed from extensive surgical resection in ir assessment in irs1 to more of new adjuvant chemo radiation followed by bladder preservation surgeries in irs4 now coming to the cog guidelines cog guidelines advocate bladder preservation by initially advocating a biopsy followed by new adjuvant chemo radiation now that is the difference between european guidelines and cog guidelines is that they give radiation up front as well followed by uh, for 40 40 to 45 weeks uh, uh, long term follow up of these patients and if there is a viable uh, tumor which is still seen after that then surgical resection is recommended but not all viable uh, masses actually are viable diseases in these cases coming to the european cooperative group guidelines the siop again focuses on bladder preservation with initially only new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by reevaluation and to consider surgery if there is no response here radiotherapy is considered as a last option 
Now, similarly with the CWS German study, again, new adjuvant chemotherapy is only given, and even and if response is not seen at nine weeks, then only radiotherapy is planned. Again, with the primary focus being on bladder preservation for these patients as well. Now, coming to the local control of the disease in these patients, they are primarily by surgery and radiation, with COG recommending either a delayed primary excision after 12 weeks, or at the time of presentation, if the tumor is more than five centimeters, then we can increase the dose of radiotherapy for local control. The outcomes in all of these studies are pretty much same, with the overall survival being ranging from 75 to 80 percent, with majority of the failures being those of local failures, which usually occur early on within three years of these patients. Now, the reason I decided to present this topic is because we recently encountered a case of such uh, in, in a child of 13 years who had no significant antenatal history, but he had presented outside with acute renal retention for which a foley was inserted, which only didn't 80 cc of urine. A uh, trial without catheter was tried outside. It failed multiple times. His creatinine level was increasing. He was referred to actually the neurology department in our hospital for evaluation of neurogenic bladder. But from there, he was referred to us where on physical examination, we found a large prostatic mass on DRE and an ultrasound revealed bilateral hydrogen necrosis. So surprisingly, no mass was seen. But because of the high clinical index of suspicion that we had, we got an MRI pelvis for this patient done, which revealed the 11 into 9 to 12 centimeter mass in the rectovesicle recto space, extending anteriorly into the bladder and posteriorly into the rectum as well. And it was compressing the bilateral vesicle junctions as well. Now, as you can see, this mass was going from the prostate to the bladder and you can also see the tip of the urinary catheter bulb inside the bladder and you can see that the capacity of the bladder has been reduced. Uh, as you can also see here that uh, the both the ureters are dilated and tortuous and a hydronephrosis has been seen in this patient. We did a cystoscopy for the patient which revealed a large extra luminal bulge which was seen in the posterior wall. Actually, it was also seen in the posterior urethra as well and uh, bilateral use could not be visualized and the bladder capacity was around 50 to 60 cc. Uh, we did a trust guided prostatic biopsy for this patient which recently revealed it to be a rhabdomyosarcoma of the alveolar type and uh, we have also done urinary diversions as uh, bilateral use could not be seen. We have done the uh, percutaneous nephrostomy for this patient. Currently, this patient is on a three drug regime, new adjuvant chemotherapy of vincristin, uh, actinomycin D and cyclophosphamide. Uh, thank you for the patient listening and thank you for the opportunity that you have provided me uh, today. Oh, ah. So you can stop uh, uh, sharing the screen. Uh, thank you for uh, your excellent presentation. Uh, I have one quick question. Recently, I okay. had a two-year child presented with retention and my evolution and sonography, which was subsequently confirmed in the MRI, it was a mass of 3.5 centimeter situated at the bladder neck, uh, extending into the prostatic area as well as means down as well as into the bladder towards the right side wall. Uh, which which will be your preferred route for the biopsy? Uh, and why? Yeah. And second thing is that uh, the parents, on confirming the diagnosis, parents were not willing for the any major excisional surgery. In that case, how you deal this case? Sir. Uh... It is stated in the guidelines that the preferred route for biopsy is actually an endoscopic group. And uh, if that is not possible, then the second option should be a transocycle group. And if on pre-operative imaging, uh, there are enlarged lymph nodes in the uh, peritoneal... Uh, on or... rectal examination, it was uh, probable. So will you prefer uh, taking the transrectal biopsy in this case, or still you will go for endoscopic biopsy? Sir, actually the guidelines are endoscopic, but... Uh, even in our case, it was easier for us to take a transrectal biopsy. That is why we did a transrectal biopsy. I don't think so. There is any contraindication in taking a, a transrectal biopsy in the case. And the second question uh, about whether the patients are, uh, whether the parents of the child are willing, uh, it is very important that the parents of such a child are well educated because, and they are explained thoroughly about the disease that the child has. Because we should keep the expectations of the patients realistic as well. And uh, it has been clearly said now that instead of going for radical surgical excision, we can actually keep these patients on new adjuvant chemotherapy and then follow them, late, follow them up at regular intervals with imaging to see if the mass is progressing or whether it is okay. static. So, it so is that is what I just wanted to convey very quickly that the child has completed eight and a half year. Uh, they were not willing and uh, extensive chemotherapy, radiotherapy 
and uh, given and uh, is in a beautiful fall up and uh, particular right now he is completely cured of the disease now pramod uh, i would like to request you to raise the question uh, sure so kandeep uh, excellent presentation couple of things um you you talk about 75% survival rates with these new protocols but do you know what the quality of life for these patients is yes sir. the quality of life is actually uh, not that good for these patients because even though with organ preservation we have preserved the organs but the physiological uh, the physiological activity of the of the organ that we are preserving is not well preserved only 40% of the patients who are actually had an organ preserving uh, surgery uh, ha had normal bladder functions and uh, to be quite honest there are not a lot of studies which have actually evaluated this with the pre operative uds and a post operative uds and uh, right. you're not going to be able to get pre op urodynamic son when you have someone who has a bladder tumor because you're not yes, going to so overfill so their bladder right yes, but, exactly. um, that's my point sir you can't actually say if with this therapy it's actually progressed or if we had gone the other way if it's not progressed because pre operative uds is very difficult to do in these patients well it's not just difficult it's contraindicated right yes, so contraindicated. exactly sir um but um i will tell you from experience that the radiation therapy so here we try yes, to minimize sir. radiation therapy as much as possible so our preferred technique is to do chemotherapy two or three cycles Pramod, and i will then... come to you i will come to you uh, just uh, if you have any another question you please raise sure are you talking about fertility preservation if you're going to be doing mainly uh chemotherapy and radiation and the test you know these underdeveloped testicles are going to be in the radiation field Yes, sir. Are you what? How are you counseling the families about fertility for this child, for both that boys a, and girls? That is an additional point that I want to make. That uh, late effects of radiotherapy are that there are sexual and reproductive dysfunctions which occur. But in our country, because so we haven't encountered so many of these cases in our setup, so we really don't counsel the patients regarding uh, the future <coughs> sexual and reproductive dysfunctions that they occur. they are more concerned whether because in our setup they are more concerned whether the patient will be able to survive till you know he is an adolescent or will he be able to become an adult so our main focus is to counsel the patients regarding that with the sexual and the reproductive dysfunction that the patient might have later on in life taking a back seat and uh, although i agree it is very important to tell the patients that what will happen later on in the future that they might have abnormal semen analysis reports and they might uh, have infertility infertility later on in the future but uh, with this patient mother it was uh, perfect it was perfect hard to you have given a good excellent answer now uh, uh, you have a opportunity to have one more question any other uh, sir, expert time, time over sir like last question uh, uh, him uh, from any of the faculty want to ask he can uh, unmute himself yeah dr ansari go ahead yes, yes. The, uh, precise, doctor, uh, yes. question my uh, dr karan what is your take if i say take out the bladder and give a small conduit why to have some pro pro problem 40% 30% functional bladder so much chemotherapy it is therapy infertility why not to take out bladder and give a small conduit sir uh, that is a very good question sir you can do that as well uh, but what has been seen is that with for the making of a conduit these patients later on again might require radiotherapy so you are again exposing that field to radiotherapy again so uh, um it depends upon the choice of the patient and uh, most of the okay, data that fine. we have uh, karandeep uh, western... excellent uh, uh, with that uh, we are uh, closing your presentation and uh, judges can put their mark uh, we have it uh, precisely 4 minutes time uh, pramod uh, we would like to have some chat with you uh, as you are with us uh, now uh, you unmute yourself uh, can you tell us uh, uh, during this particular period all of years how many students uh, or or junior fellow or even senior person like me received there in cincinnati for small to large fellowship and what do you think that how uh, can you point out a couple of these people who got benefited and they are doing tremendous uh, uh, work uh, in the area of pediatric urology would like to share your experience uh, as you are doing this great uh, job for us I'm sorry, so Anil. The question is, uh, how, how, uh, what is our international fellowship? How many, how many students attended your Cincinnati uh, through your scholarship, and oh, how far they, how far they benefited, and can you name at least one or two? So, um, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, uh, my wife and I established this scholarship in memory of my younger brother who passed away about ten years ago. Uh, I handed off the control of the scholarship to the Urological Society of India and the AUA because I felt that was going to be better. So this is a adjunct to the Chakraborty Scholarship, which is 
already, you all know about the Chuck Berry Scholarship. So the AUA and the USI allow one uh, urologist from India to come and spend time in a US program. So I thought I'd just mimic the Chuck Berry Scholarship in my brother's honor and memory. So it's called the Pradeep Reddy Scholarship. And um, we've been doing it now for about eight years. So Dr. Sekon uh, was uh, one of the uh, individuals who came and you know we had a wonderful time. I think that the benefit is that it's bi-directional, right? We're learning, my fellows get to see um, folks from India who are coming in and with their experience with a large number of volume of cases in some instances. Uh, but, uh, you know, so Dr. Sekon had a wonderful time. We really enjoyed. Um, we've had a couple of other individuals. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, myself was there for seven days. Uh, yeah, you were there. Just, uh, we've, you know, we've had Dr. Uh, Joshi. This is one week fellowship, but I got really um, many, many benefits from uh, being there at least only one week, but it was quite beneficial to me. Right. We had uh, Dr. Rakesh Joshi um, and also Dr. Um, Jayshree from uh, um, Civil Hospital also came. So it's not open just to urologists. It's you know pediatric surgeons who are doing pediatric urology also are welcome to join us there. And My what do you think? How long you are going to continue with this? How long uh, you are so, going to continue with this? Yeah. So we have established a trust account. So the interest from that is going to, even when I retire, this, will, this scholarship will continue forever. So that's our goal. So, My wife and I. So we, would like we, to, we would like to request uh, those juniors, uh, uh, residents, and trainees are watching this particular uh, uh, this webinar. They can get the benefit uh, of this. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, please apply to. It's through the Urological Society of India. Please apply once a year. They have the uh, uh, you know nom call for nominations where you um, send your application in to the Chakrabarty Scholarship, and then we pull out the people who have interest in pediatric urology and bring them over here. So. We've done that, like I said, about eight eight folks have come over so far, and uh, it's, it's going to happen every year. Thank you, Pramod, uh, to you and your family, you and uh, your wife, Usa. This so is a small, very generous small, work. small effort, yeah. very small and, effort. Uh, to help uh, stay with us. Uh, we'll come back to you. Uh, we move to the another presentation. It is uh, uh, from the uh, next is from the Dr. Shomya Ayer. Uh, this is from the Subdarjan uh, Hospital, Delhi. And the mentor is Dr. Sridharth Yadav, and she's going to speak on uh, technical factors to improve surgical outcome in hypospadias. So, Samia, you can share your screen, uh, uh, make it a uh, full screen. Okay, and uh, yes. all right, your time starts now. Okay, so my slide is visible? Yes, you can start. Okay, yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Samia Ayer from Sabdajan Hospital, and I'll be talking on the technical factors to improve surgical outcome in hypospadias. But uh, before I begin, I would like to take this chance to thank everyone here for giving me this wonderful opportunity. A variety of technical aspects can be tweaked to improve the surgical outcomes, uh, such as the choice of procedure, tissue interposition, technique and tissue handling, suture materials, stenting and dressing. I'll be addressing each by one by one. Beginning with the choice of procedure, what is usually recommended is a single stage procedure for the distal type or the mid type of hypospadias and a two stage procedure for the mid and proximal type. Many centers also do a single stage for all kinds of hypospadias. However, at our center, we prefer a single stage uh, TIP repair for the distal and the mid type. And we usually do a two stage repair for the proximal hypospadias or patients who present with severe cordy or redo cases. In general, we prefer a staged procedure over complex single stage reconstructions. Uh, this is a demographic profile of our patient. We usually deal with uh, adolescent patients in our institute, and uh, this is a general distribution of the cases. So primarily 40% of them are distal hypospadias, 30% of them each are mid and proximal hypospadias. Of the surgeries performed by us, 60% are staged procedures, followed by 30% TIP procedures. 20% of the patients we deal with are redo cases, and 60% of them have mid or proximal type with significant cordy, which needs urethral plate transection. So keeping in mind all of this, it was found that there is a higher risk of urethroplasty failure when combined with corporal grafting in a single stage repair. Besides, a two stage repair was found to confer superior cosmetic and functional results in severe proximal hypospadias. So keeping in mind the patient profile of our institute, we have preferred a two stage procedure. Tissue interposition is yet another important factor that determines the surgical outcome. It is a protective intermediate layer between the neourethra and the skin. The various options we use are the datus flap from the scrotum, the prepucial deepithelized datus flap, and the tunica vaginalis flap. 
while thinking about the dartos interposition it is important to keep in mind that there should be a meticulous dissection between the dartos and the skin it should be such that we mobilize it adequately so as to avoid a torsion but at the same time it should not be too aggressive so as to lead to flap necrosis the width of the pedicle should be at least more than 1 cm we have also used fibrin glue over the neo urethra in certain difficult redo cases wherein the dartos flap was not much robust so the advantage of using a fibrin glue is that it is biodegradable it shows minimal foreign body reaction and also promotes angiogenesis besides there have been studies which have shown a decreased rate of urethrocutaneous fistula in patients using fibrin sealant another important thing to consider is the way we handle the tissues we should handle them with minimal tissue trauma use skin works and microsurgical instruments minimal and pinpoint cautery must be exercised and dissection must always be carried out in a proper tissue plane while maintaining the vascularity epithelial inversion is yet another important point it is crucial to have a smooth neo urethra with well inverted sutures because it has found to improve the healing due to close abutment of the incised surfaces besides eversion was found to produce periurethral reaction that might lead to urine leakage fistula or diverticular formation also what we do is at the end of uh, formation of the neo urethra we perform an intraoperative methylene blue leak test so as to confirm the watertight nature of the anastomosis in terms of sutures we use 40 to 60 both monofilament and polyfilament it is totally upon the surgeon's choice and we perform a continuous subcuticular suturing we have not faced any difference in the fistula rate for both the sutures monocryl has its own advantage of being easier to pass whereas vicryl has the advantage of being a slower absorption time compared to monocryl thereby allowing healing yet completely dissolves before the suture tract will epithelize as a stent we use a silicon foley catheter which serves both the purpose of being a stent as well as for diversion we keep it for a period of 7 to 14 days based upon the patient and it is taped to the anterior abdominal wall so as to avoid a gland separation by ventral tension dressing is another matter of debate because some say the purpose of dressing is to immobilize the penis minimize the edema and prevent hematoma whereas others say that repair without dressing confers better results than with dressing so striking a balance between both the school of thoughts we use tegaderm which is a bio occlusive dressing and keep it for a period of 48 hours and uh, we remove the dressing and discharge the patient the advantages of using tegaderm is that it is not too tight to cause pressure necrosis of the skin and it is supple simple and easy to remove besides the transparent nature also allows us for the wound observation so a short message will be that a successful outcome is an amalgamation of several factors however proper selection of the patient tailor technique and surgeon's experience is most crucial thank you thank you dr tomia uh, you can stop sharing the screen so uh, obviously it will go to the amilal bhat sir uh, sir you your questions uh, very precise uh, one question because we have a couple of more people interested to ask the question sir go ahead uh, decision making you have put the important factor miss vision is cardi so how do you correct yes, the cardi there is a very so cardi correction very important. yes sir And how uh, does so cardi decide the type of repair yes sir if it is a very severe cardi and uh, besides uh, it is a severe cardi that uh, usually emanates us towards a more proximal uh, uh, to a more uh, two stage repair however what we start is that uh, we do a, a penile degloving after that if the cordy still persists we then go for a dorsal plication and even after a dorsal plication the cordy persists we go for a urethral plate mobilization and transection so in cases wherein uh, uh, the patient needs a urethral plate transection and mobilization we usually in those cases we go for a two staged procedure then what are the causes of cordy So the body can be uh, only yes, sir. That uh, penile degloving and then straight forward for dorsal plication. Nothing else. No, so what even after this, if it cordy? doesn't, uh, you just, the body sir can be. Because, what are the causes of body, and do you go according to the etiological factor or simply by deciding that's okay, penile degloving, dorsal application? No, sir. The body can be because of the skin. That is the deficient ventral skin. 
it could be because of the shortened urethra or it could also be because of the corporal shortened corporal bodies so all of the three factors can produce a cordy so accordingly we go that uh, if the cordy is not improving even after a penile degloving we go for a dorsal plication but even after dorsal plication if the cordy is not improving we go for a urethral plate mobilization and transection come come to come here you have done a penile yes. degloving so you have taken care of the skin and dartos yes sir now comes the spongiosal factor is in every case uh, there is a okay, spongiosal sir sir sir, sir uh, you have put a point now dr patak quickly your question uh how do you very precise uh, question what, sir yeah, yeah. Uh, what are the steps you do to achieve a good uh, meatus okay yeah uh so for that uh, yes it uh, so it depends if it is a distal kind of a hypospadias uh we make sure that uh, when we are uh, raising uh, we raise an adequate gland swings so as to when we are giving it a coverage there is uh, tension free coverage at the same time um, uh yes and uh, at the same time we make sure that when we are closing it we don't close it too distal towards the distal end but we at least close it 3 to 4 mm proximal to the intended meatus so that it does not lead to a meatal stenosis in the future okay smooth shoot your question attire okay, excellent presentation thank you very much i have two quick questions one is uh you know you talk about the improvement in surgical outcomes of hypospadias do you approach primary hypospadias and reoperative hypospadias how do you defer your approach and to yes, do you feel there's any benefit for preoperative stimulation with testosterone and if so when would you use that okay sir uh, so since our sir our is a tertiary care institute and we also have a pediatric uh, surgery department so the cases that we usually get are uh, of the adolescent age group and uh, so we don't uh, have much issues with the glands with or the size of the penis in the patient and also we are we get a lot of referred cases which are either redo cases or uh, severe kind of a proximal hypospadias so uh, we have not yet uh, we don't usually ex- have much experience with the testosterone but uh, from what we know and what the literature says is that testosterone does produce uh, an improvement in the uh, glandular width as well as in producing an uh, increase in the penile length so, so the yes, big benefit is vascularity uh, the new vascularity what about the redo Yeah, how do you? Yes, how is your approach different from primary cases to reoperative cases? Because you, you, all those factors are very cases, important. But how do you make sure that your reoperative strategy is not going to have a failure from what happened with the first operation? Right, sir. So, uh, so when we are dealing with the reoperative cases, we usually have a take at the kind of the tissue that we are dealing with. if uh, whether the patient has had multiple reoperative uh, incidences or is it the first time is the repair is failing and uh, if you find that the urethral plate is adequate or not um, we take a look at the urethral plate whether it is adequate or not and whether we will be getting a good interposition tissue or not so uh, yes so based upon that uh, we plan our uh, redo procedures so it is primarily when we are dealing with so redo yeah, sometimes you don't uh, don't have even tissue to cover the penis Yeah. At the end so of time is over. Uh, forget about the uh, yes, so barrier layer. So what you do? Yeah. In those so cases, we go for a two stage. Directly procedure, assess sir. the what tissue available to you. What tissue is available? Yes, sir. We assess for the perfect. local tissue. So, the local okay. tissue is not. Uh, yes, sir. Available. Fine, Sonia. Uh, excellent. Uh, so, pause your presentation as you have okay. finished your four minutes. Uh, one closing you, thought, uh, real quick. Dot. I your excellent presentation, but I'm coming. I'm coming thing, to Doctor Butt. has been proposing and been a champion of cordy for a long time even when it was not a hot topic item but we're now learning that cordy is so important and that's actually one of the biggest causes for failures of hypospadias is so pramod i'm coming to uh, yeah. let me first declare this uh, presentation is closed sure. and the judges can put their marks okay so go ahead with that and uh, now i'm coming to you you can continue with your uh, Uh, remarks uh, for two minutes, and then we'll go to the uh, doctor uh, part to respond to you. Yeah, sure, sure. No, I was just going to uh, tell Dr. Iyer that one of the most important things when you're looking at why did the original repair fail, and I think it's uh, something that Dr. Bat's been proposing and been a champion of for a long time is cordy. I don't think that we um, fully address cordy in the past, 
And you have to understand the importance of any residual cordy, or as you're seeing the adolescent patients when they go through puberty, if it's due to corporal disproportion, you're gonna have recurrent cordy and the recurrent cordy is gonna put pressure points on those tissue reconstruction from the first hypospadias repair and it's gonna fail. And if you don't appropriately address that cordy at your reoperative procedure, your second operation will also fail. So I know that Dr. Butt's been a big proponent of that for a long time. And uh, you know he, he's really championed the assessment and treatment of cordy, which is really important. Uh, Dr. Bhatt, you wanted to ask uh, Soumya something and uh, she was not reaching to that particular point. You would like to elaborate on that? The point was, you see, the point which I wanted to make was that after penile degloving, now there are two uh, things remains there, whether it's a bug's fascia. If you mobilize the urethral plate and lift up the urethral plate, then you cover up the bug's fascia. And if really the urethral plate segment means spongosal segment is short, then you transect the urethral plate to correct the cordy. Many a time you will find that the spongosal segment is adequate, but there is a dorsoventral corporal disproportion. In these cases, either you go for the corporoplasty or dorsal plication. And it is a very, very, very important, I'll put thrice that Correction of cordy will add to your success. If you have done a good correction of cordy, whether you are going for a single stage or of a two stage, even in two stage repair also, the most important point is you correct the cordy nicely. And that will be, will full risk. Uh, for what we have was coming up for that, to identify the tissue, make that, and we have made that, few things which will come up soon. Okay, perfect. So we uh, uh, like to thank you once again to Somya, to you, as well as to your mentor, uh, Siddharth. Dr. Siddharth, uh, you move to the next uh, presentations. We have uh, two presentations. Uh, Reddy is still with us, uh, and we are coming again at the end of this presentation to you for some uh, observation. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to jump off because I've got another commitment at uh, 11 o'clock. I'm so sorry. So, but you are still there for how many minutes? It's, it's 11 o'clock. I got to head, head over to the... So, so uh, okay, okay. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Tell us, tell us in a two minutes or three minutes time, uh, your journey in the pediatric urology, how you pass through the phases and uh, where exactly you are and how satisfied you are with the pediatric urology. Uh, my journey was a little convoluted. So uh, when I came, well, I actually went to medical school to become a pediatric surgeon. That was my passion. And uh, when I finished medical school in India and came to the United States, uh, I was a categorical general surgery resident, and everybody kept saying, well, promote you're a foreign graduate, you'll never get into a fellowship. I refused to take somebody else dictating my future, so I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to accept that. So I switched from general surgery to urology. Uh, at that point, I had not been exposed to pediatric urology in India, so it was not on my radar as a career, but um, switched to urology, and then I went to Toronto Sick Kids for my fellowship in pediatric urology, and uh, I... Uh, I will tell you, best decision in my life. I love pediatric urology. I think it has the best aspects of urology and pediatric surgery coming together for the benefit of a child. And to me, when you can make a child healthy and happy, there, there's no better calling for me. So I love what I do. I look forward to coming to work every day. I get to work with smart individuals from around the world. Um, and uh, you know, also the science. I mean, I have a basic science lab. We're now looking at biomarkers of bladder injury so we can identify abnormal bladders with just a liquid biopsy rather than uh, doing what we do right now, which is look at renal injury as a sign of bladder dysfunction. So um, I do think that uh, it's been a privilege to have this journey. And uh, I thank God for you know giving me the detour that he gave me and <laughs> making me a pediatric urologist. But uh, I would encourage all of the young faculty and the young residents and uh, trainees you know, it, it is, I know in India, it is still a very nascent specialty, but it is one of the most rewarding things you can do is to take care of children and enable them to have a wonderful, happy, healthy life. It, it is uh, really so, uh, Pramod, uh, at the end, uh, before you leave, would you like to mention a couple of names uh, who inspired you or you can say your mentors? Oh, sure. So the first one is Dr. Uh, Will Cromie. Uh, Dr. William Cromie was a pediatric urologist in Albany, and he's the one who kind of saw me upset that I wasn't going to be a pediatric surgeon. He said, Pramod, have you ever thought about pediatric urology? So he opened the door to me exploring that. Uh, Dr. Tony Curry was my mentor at uh, Toronto Sick Kids. 
and indirectly through Dr. Curry was Bernie Churchill. I never worked with Dr. Churchill, but all of his teachings have been uh, instilled in me through Dr. Curry and then Dr. Curtis Sheldon, who was a very unique individual. I don't know a lot of you know this, but Dr. Sheldon did general surgery residency, pediatric surgery fellowship, adult urology residency, and pediatric urology fellowship. So he did four trainings. He's, he's one of the world's few quadruple boarded surgeons. And I've had the benefit of working with him for you know, over 20 years. One of the smartest people I know in the world, um, incredible surgeon. And I've been a big beneficiary of his philosophy, teachings, surgical skills. Uh, so I owe a lot to Dr. Sheldon. Uh, and then all of my colleagues. I mean, I've been working with Dr. Butt on a, a hypospadias textbook. And uh, again, as I mentioned, you know, Dr. Butt's been a big champion of Cordy. We are now learning how important that Cordy issue is and that it really has to be addressed at that first operation, otherwise it's going to fail. So well, and, uh, a lot of my colleagues journey, from India. Incredible journey and, uh, and uh, uh, very inspiring story. Uh, and uh, we also got uh, very much uh, emotional listening to you. That, uh, you still remember those who contributed uh, very much in your uh, path, was the process in the pediatric urology and your uh, journey. No, no question. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for my teachers. And, uh, you know, for the young individuals out there, there's a lesson from the Mahabharata where Karna takes a knife and he carves his, the lines in his hand so he can go and learn from Parshurama, right? So... That's what I want to tell you is that your destiny and your future is in your own hands. Please don't let other people change it for you. Stay steadfast to your dreams. Find your passion and pursue your passion. Okay. Thank you, Pramod. Uh, we I leave you. Thank you. Pramod, uh, thank so much. I really appreciate like it. To make a comment. I think Pramod is the person who has been inspiration for today's generation also. And he has made this for the future generation forever putting the fellowship, pediatric urology fellowship. Thank you, Pramod, for that one. And uh, you have a big uh, contribution. Pramod, uh, in Indian once pediatric. again, uh, thank you very much on behalf of Urological Society of India and Indian School of Urology for joining and sparing this time. And we are looking forward to see you and oh, your team. Uh, sorry, sorry. The second global, the second so global pediatric urology webinar, which is yeah. coming in the next month, next one or two months. Second right. global pediatric urology webinar. All right. Well, I leave thank you, you very much. All of you frontline heroes. Take care. Hi, thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. So we move to the next presentation and I request uh, Dr. Uh, Zain uh, Tamboli to share his screen. His mentor is Dr. Utsav Sailesa and he's from the SGPGI Lucknow very Premium Institute. He's going to speak on long-term urinary bladder function. Following, unilateral reflux in low-loop cutaneous urethrostomy as compared to the vesicostomy. Very interesting topic. He's comparing the bladder function long-term uh, the unilateral refluxing low look venous urethrostomy versus the vesicostomy. Make it full screen. Yeah, go ahead. Don't be on two devices at the same time. So you know very well. Make it full screen. Uh, hello, sir. I am Dr. Utsav. No, no, no. Utsav. So, people are sitting in the same room with the multiple devices. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Zain Tamboli. Uh, me, along with my mentor, Dr. Utsa, from the Division of Pediatric Urology from SGPJMS Lucknow, will be presenting on long term urinary bladder function following unilateral refluxing low loop cutaneous urethrostomy as compared to vesicostomy. So, posterior urethral valve, as you know, since being described by Young in 1919, has a variety of presentation with the spectrum ranging from incompatibility with life early in the neonatal period to a late presentation with delayed bladder uh, function. So the primary fulguration of the wall, uh, the treatment with endoscopic wall ablation has a level 3B recommendation. This eventually will lead to better, better bladder cycling and better bladder compliance in the long term. But in some cases, even diversion is needed. But which are these cases? In children who are too sick, have sepsis, Persistent acidosis, electrolyte imbalance, even after insertion of a catheter or after fulguration of the ball. In very small weight babies or premature babies, in whom technically it is not feasible for resection of the uh, uh, posterior urethral ball, there is no expertise available in peripheral centers, or even after the fulguration, persistent azotemia and hydronephrosis persists. So, what are the uh, options available to urologists? We either do a diversion at the le level of the bladder or a supravesical diversion. The apparent advantages of a vesicostomy are that it is simpler to do, can be even done at peripheral centers, and it is easier to close. 
it has an apparent disadvantage of maybe not helping in bladder recycling that much it may lead to loss of capacity of the bladder over long term and poor compliance whereas on the other hand supravesical diversion does not touch the bladder in any way and helps in better bladder recycling but it is not as simple as a simple vesicostomy and the closure might need a little more experience as as compared to vesicostomy so when we see the impact on bladder function there is a distinct effect of a worse outcome of maximum bladder capacity and a higher end filling pressure in patients with vesicostomy as compared to ureterostomy coming to some case scenarios here we can see bilateral grade 5 viewers with small bladder capacity with a dilated posterior urethra mostly children with posterior urethral balls what will you recommend vesicostomy or a ureterostomy we, we at our centers would prefer a unilateral low loop reflux and cutaneous ureterostomy with the uh, goal that single renal unit will drain to a proximal uh, ureter from one side and the other renal unit will drain the urine into the bladder and from there through a vesico cutaneous reflux it will drain to the distal ureter outside so urinary cycling through the bladder is preserved bladder defunctionalization is prevented hence severely contracted urinary bladder will not result and there will be no high leak point pressures patient the child will be protected from incontinence and bed wetting he will not need anticholinergics the and its subsequent side effects and 30 to 40% of the patients they will not even the percentage progressing to ckd or esrd might be reduced scientific evidence for supravesical diversion according to eu guidelines 2020 is if the supravesical diversion is needed if the bladder drainage is inadequate but its temporal effect on incontinence the level of medications needed and the long term renal outcome need to be studied i will be presenting a few literature review this is the study by dr puri et al from aims in which they studied about 67 patients in which the bladder dysfunction was correlated with the initial surgical management for pulguration vesicostomy or ureterostomy the factors studied were bladder capacity end filling pressures dextrosal oral activity and upper tract deterioration we could see that in this study ureterostomy had a good patients had a good bladder capacity in almost 100% patients while those undergoing wall pulgurations also were comparable 96% but those who underwent vesicostomy had poor bladder capacities dextrosal over activity was present in two thirds of the patients undergoing vesicostomy and upper tract deterioration was found in highest incidence in patients with capacity less than 60% of the normal this also was found in patients undergoing vesicostomy this is another study from the journal of urology in which bilateral sober diversion was done in 36 patients and it was undiverted after about 55 months we could see that uh, supravesical diversion did not adversely affect the bladder functions with preserved bladder capacity in 80% and good compliance in about 70% of the patients coming to the next study from israel the it compared about eight patients at the long term follow up of about 12 and a half years in this they found that after low loop ureter cutaneous ureterostomy the bladder capacity for age was normal in all these patients none of them required augmentation and there were mild irritative bladder in one of these patients coming to our our center we operated upon 16 patients with vesicostomy and eight patients with low loop cutaneous ureterostomy over a median follow up of 25 to 30 months over all age groups of neonate less than one year and more than one year we could see that the drop in the mean serum creatinine pre and post procedure was more in the loop ureter uh, loop ureter cutaneous uh, stomy group while uh, in all of these patients who had undergone the loop cutaneous ureterostomy all of them had high grade vur after the end diversion and bladder closure we could see that uh, in the vesicostomy group 19% had small bladder capacity for age and incontinence while none in the loop ureterostomy remaining had this complications urodynamic parameters uh, in 12 of these patients were high end filling pressures and dextrosal activity about one third of these patients there was no excess complication in loop ureterostomy group which was almost comparable to vesicostomy group so our final take is unilateral refluxing low loop cutaneous ureterostomy allows continuous urine cycling through the bladder it preserves bladder function in the long run so it is better than vesicostomy but larger head to head phase 3 randomized prospective studies are required to confirm this further thank you yes uh, i think uh, anil sir is uh, venu kopal sir wants to ask a question sir you can go ahead okay sir unmute sir, yourself can you hear me yes, yeah, yeah, please go ahead sir please go ahead i would, I would like to ask a presenter 
how long did they ma maintain the uh, uretric uh, uretrostomy in relation to the final outcome of the patient? Now, because any diversion that you do, upper tract or even bladder, it's only a temporary job. And yes. if you are, do you have any cases where you have to keep this for a very long time since the cranial function was not improving? Our, this study uh, is a pilot study, sir. This has a mean follow-up of about 32 and a half years. Till now, uh, we, uh, we have not had... 32 years? 32 yes, and a half years? We have a follow-up of two and a half years, years sir. This two and a half years, recently, recently started pilot study. We have a follow-up of these patients for two and a half years. The data collected is over seven years. After the renal function stabilizes, only then will we go for reversing the uretrostomy. Maximum will wait for six months to one year. What type of undiversion do you do? So we do a what unilateral. What type of undiversion do you do? Undiversion, sir. We uh, close, uh, sir. Uh, the, uh, we do a routine uh, stoma closure, sir, for the uh, patient with the degestating. Uh, from the same incision, with the peristomal incision. In the long term, but even if it is the renal function, it depends. Suppose in some cases, we have the option, if the renal function is not improving, or if the renal unit is not improving, we have the option for going for nephroureterectomy uh, uh, also later on without touching the bladder. That is an advantage of this low loop cutaneous urostomy. We need, don't need to go and touch the bladder if that kidney is not. You showed in your case, one of the exercises you showed, right side appeared stenotic and left side was perplexing. You did a left uh, uh, loop urostomy or uh, you did a low urostomy, perplexing urostomy on the left side. Now, what happened to the right side? Sir, from the right side, whatever urine is draining, that will be coming into the bladder. Because of the vesicouretric reflux on the operated side, we'll take help of that and the urine will be coming out from the distal ureteric stoma. No, supposing it's a, it appears as it's stenotic. Your x-ray what you showed appeared as stenotic. Will a stenotic it, urine uh, drain? Yes. If it is stenotic and the renal function is not improving, we will do another loop cutaneous urethrostomy on the other side also, sir. In what way is going to help? So it would help in the stabilizing the renal function also of the patient, sir. Then why, why do I do a reflexing urethrostomy at all? Sir, the why incidence of VUJ... The age all respected for The uh, The incidence of VUJO is very less for 1.5 to 3 percent since we could uh, this is a very rare incident so we could take an advantage of supravesical diversion initially only as compared to vesicostomy okay zen can i ask one question yes sir please sir uh, zen uh, 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 in, when you are doing MCU, do you decide about the width of the ureter to plan the ureterostomy? One. Number two, any particular side prediction that you want to choose, left side or right side? Number three, any differential improvement? You have you have mentioned uh, the bladder function improved. Uh, any any patients where renal function has not improved, but bladder function is improved? Yes, sir. Uh, the, so, taking your uh, first question, uh, which side will be preferred? Uh, re regarding that, uh, we will decide on the worst functioning, uh, the one with the higher grade of VUR, we will select that. If both units have the same grade of VUR, we might go with the left one because eventually later on, if the person develops CKD, ESRD, we are more comfortable with the uh, right renal force or renal transplantation later on. So that is the um, answer for that. And uh, depending on the ureteric size, sir, coming to that question, uh, uh, no, sir, we decide on the clinical uh, picture of the patient, sir. There is no uh, size cutoff which we use for uh, taking the ureter, sir. And the third question, sir. 
Uh, could you please repeat it, sir? Sir, you are mute, sir. Sir, we can't hear you. Uh, sir, the you final question is differential improvement, a real function versus better function. Yeah. So, sir, I will take this question. We follow it up with a dear message. And, uh, the, and hence, we see uh, what is the differential function and then follow it up accordingly. If they are both the, if suppose there are grade five flux in both the kidneys, both the units, then we will choose the worst functioning uh, unit to do a ureterostomy. You need to do ureterostomy. Ure that is our protocol. No, we my do, question do, is: you, a, you have do, eight uh, questions uh, with low loop refluxing ureterostomy. I want to know. You have mentioned good results with the better function outcomes. Yes, I sir. want to know whether there is any mismatch between better functional. Outcomes versus renal function improvement. No, sir. Uh, we will unless the bladder function is. Uh, we, uh, we will not. We do, uh, in our routine protocol, we do not do a routine uh, DMSA on the follow up for PUV patients, sir. We do a CMG and we do a urophlometry and MCU. If in case it is deteriorating, the serum graded, and then we might have a look at the renal function. Uh, as such, on routine follow up, uh, we will not go for just the DMSA just to find out the functions. We will do a urolytic study. Uh, uh, Doctor Jain, uh, time is up, sir. Uh, we can announce this uh, presentation first, and then we come to fine. you, sir. Sir, uh, uh, do we have more time, uh, Rahul? No, 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 sir. We are uh, already exceeded I'm, the I'm time. Extremely sorry. I'm extremely sorry because of uh, my connectivity disappeared for a while. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Rahul and uh, Dr. Chawla, to be on the uh, for the presentations. So we move to the last presentation. Uh, that is from uh, again Bikaner. Dr. Ajay Gandhi is presenting on uh, male extrophy repair tips and tricks. Uh, his mentor is Dr. Yogendra, and they are from the Bikaner, uh, Sardar Patel Medical College, uh, Bikaner. Any problem with your presentation audio? Ajay, you unmute yourself. Ajay, we don't have much of time left. Should I start, sir? Yes, go ahead. Your presentation starts now. Good evening, all respected teachers and judges. Myself, Dr. Ajay Gandhi, MCH final year resident from the Sadar Patel Medical College. The topic of today's presentation is tips and tricks of nail extrophy repair. The aim of our presentation is to uh, demonstrate the first stage of extrophy uh, closure includes bladder closure, anti abdominal valve closure, as well as the posterior thyroid closure in a uh, staged manner. It's a very uncommon anomaly. Occurs one in 46,000 live births. Main predisposing factors are the in vitro fertilization and the progesterone exposure antenatally. During last six years, we have operated 22 such patients, out of which 20 were new units and two were the adult. Most of the patients were operated within 72 hours. These were the routine investigation which we have done pre-operatively. There are two schools of thought there, uh, but, uh, showing uh, many of the people are prefer modern stage reconstruction of extrophy repair as compared to the complete primary repair of extrophy. These are the tips and tricks which we will show in the upcoming video. This is a 24 hour old uh, in, uh, old neonate present with extrophy bladder. Adequacy of bladder plate is checked. Cannulation of both ureter was done. Infiltration of one is to one lakh lignocaine with adrenaline done around the uh, incision line. Stage suture was taken. Marking of incision was done. Then dissection of bladder plate was done from the rectus fascia as well as posteriorly from the peritoneum. Here is the dissection of the bladder plate from the posteriorly from the peritoneum. Division of urochus was done so that the bladder can be freed and deposited in the pelvic cavity. Further dissection from the peritoneum done.
then the ureter catheters were fixed. Division of the right and left hemi diaphragm was done. Excision of the mucus polyp was done. Inverted V shaped uh, skin excision given to create new umbilicus. SPC as well as ureter catheters were exited through that new umbilicus. Then the bladder closure done in two layers with the help of vital suture and vital four zero sutures. So first layer of bladder closure. Then the second layer of bladder closure. Pubic synthesis approximation was done by using vital one zero suture. Previously, people were using nylon or the proline suture, which has the chances of erosion as well as forming in needles for stone formation. We have avoided this and we use vital one zero. And the closure of rectus sheath was done. Is it showing completed closer? Is it dressing? And after dressing, patient uh, keep in the brand traction. That reduces the scar healing and uh, reduces the uh, scar and improve healing as well as avoid fecal contamination. This is the follow up at six weeks. SPC and the ureter catheters were removed at the three weeks. Follow up done by uh, done by the ultrasound and the urine culture sensitivity at the three months and six months and then six monthly. Patient depends on antibiotic prophylaxis. These are the completion which uh, which we compared with the other studies. Which uh, include 185 cases by Sheffer and not Baird at all, uh, 189 cases, Osma uh, 16 cases, and we have two blood, blood plus two patients have UTI, one patient developed stone, and one patient developed outlet stenosis. Seven, uh, these were the additional surgeries which we have performed in our patients. Seven patients underwent episcopal CPA, three patients underwent bladder neck reconstruction, and one patient underwent ileocystoplasty, bladder neck closure, and the mitophenol procedure. One patient uh, underwent SPC. This is the article. This is the article published in the Annals of Virology and Nephrology. This is the uh, video showing effect continence after bladder net closure. In the take home message: It's a very uncommon anomaly. Requires stage reconstruction, team work, and ICU care. First test should be performed within 72 hours. Parents should be counseled about long-term outcome and management. Surgeons should be well watched with different surgical steps and enough experience to achieve good results. Attainment of the continent is the ultimate goal. Thank you, VSI, for giving me this opportunity. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ajay, for taking this very difficult uh, topic. Uh, uh, and, uh, I will request uh, Dr. Ansari to take the first uh, precise question, sir. So I just wondering why did, you, why did you put the baby in the brand extraction when there was no osteotomy done? So brand uh, uh, brand traction has good results in the uh, healing as well as avoid fecal contamination. Uh, if uh, and it helps in improving uh, improve for the uh, approximation of symphysis pubis. When we have not cut it, when we have not touched it. In what way it will help to bring the uh, symphysis pubis together? Because uh, in these these patients, some form of pubic diastasis is always present. When osteotomy is done, then modified brand traction not, but modified bucks traction has to be applied. In this patient, we have applied brand traction. And uh, secondly, what did you do? A special trick for uh, the continence? This was simple closure of the. Urethra, urethra bladder as well as urethroplasty. So, how did uh, these ch children came? Can I take this question? Yes. 
So Anu, this Anu, is uh, another case. This this case is after Anu, that and reconstruction. This is not after a simple strophy closure. Sir, Anu, please go. Sir, the continuous one received. Sir, please go ahead, Doctor Arya. So you have yes, one need to tell because this last video which was shown was of a continent child. Procedure shown was of no procedure done for continence. So that is why I was confusing. So question from the Dr. Venu Gopal sir. There are so many techniques of closing the bladder in extra feet. Do you think that dropping the bladder into the back in the pelvis associated with the uh, closure of uh, bladder yeah, has got a new value. Pardon, sir, I could not hear you. There are so many techniques in closing yes. the bladder. Do yes, you sir. think dropping the bladder back into the pelvis along with closure of bladder has got any importance? Yes, sir. It, it helps in continence, ultimately. Then why did you do it? We have done it, sir. No, you did it only just closer, like a two layer or three layer closer bladder. We and, have uh, done. Uh, we have done vertical reconstruction. We have approximated the symphysis pubis, and with that, we have done well mobilized the urethral plate so that it goes deep in the pelvis. I'm not talking about urethral plate at this stage. You have done a, uh, only the bladder closure, leaving the bladder neck and the urethra not prepared at that time. Which I'm, I'm agreeable with you, I'm not against it. But what I want to know is, would you have your result over and better if you had dropped the bladder back into the pelvis by cutting the white line of uh, 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 pelvis? Okay. Sir, the question is very time. clear now. Uh, Dr. Arya, answer. We have uh, incised the urogenital diaphragm. We have well mobilized the urethral plate kept inside the pelvis and we have approximated the both sides urogenital diaphragm along with symphysis pubis so that bladder lies deep into the pelvis perfect yeah, but, uh, uh, sir, 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 sir let me go to the another expert sir to ask the question well but sir you want to, to ask question right no just i wanted to ask uh, what are the you see continence is the most important point. So what are the steps which you take to have the continence in a child? Hmm. So when the bladder is about 60 to 70 cc, we, we do young D's procedure. At that time, the bladder capacity should be good. And with young D's only, what we have shown in the video, we have achieved a perfect continence. With young D's, uh, we, we achieved uh, perfect continence. If the bladder capacity is good, with the young D's, uh, the results are good. Okay, ji, you had been doing very nice. Osteotomy, osteotomy is a very, Dr. Ansari has pointed out earlier also. Okay, so, okay, so that is a point. Neonates, uh, osteotomy is not done. We, we have, we have shown, shown this series of neonates only. So neonates uh, osteotomy is not required and most of the cases are done within 7 to hours because of the malleability of the pelvic ring. The have you compared, sir, have you compared your results with the osteotomy? Sir, have you compared your results with the osteotomy and no osteotomy? Helping sir, newborn, no, nobody does osteotomy. Most no. cases are done within 72 no. hours where osteotomy is not required. Uh, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, so, what age don't do I think I, need, I, agree, I agree with uh, the presenter and the mentor that in your night you can mold the pelvis back and you don't need an osteotomy at Perfect. that time. Perfect. So, what from what age you start osteotomy? Considering osteotomy, or don't you don't practice osteotomy at all? I have practical no experience of osteotomy, but all I have done in within a month only, and none of the cases I did osteotomy. So your all cases are almost within one month. You don't have experience with the older case. No, in I, I have done two adults, but in adults also there is no role of osteotomy. Okay, and also, so that, osteotomy. Is a, also that is a bigger <laughs> area, and uh, we have a closing this uh, presentation, and we'll have a sometime a great debate between uh, for these issues, uh, osteotomy or no osteotomy in a little uh, uh, larger child. Anyway.
Uh, so this is the we have concluded the all presentations, uh, and I am probably in the time a little bit uh, maybe you should. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let me go over to the Dr. Kesu Murthy before I hand over to the Dr. Kesu Murthy. I once again thank you very much. I once again uh, thank you very much to all my uh, presenters, mentors, uh, experts who contributed time. Uh, we are very much facing too much of Corona and it's even of our family members and uh, our friends. And the passing through the turmoil, but still we could make it possible for these two and half hour, half eighty hours. I have to request uh, tomorrow's presenters that you take the place where you have a proper connectivity. Dr. Ajay, please mute yourself. Ajay, Ajay, you, yeah, please. So, find out the place where you have best possible connectivity because uh, we don't want to otherwise spoil our means uh, time of the all these uh, uh, experts and the mentors. Uh, so, with that, I'm mean, handing over to Dr. Arun Chawla. One comment. One yeah. comment. One comment. Yeah. I mean, on, I think one, sir, we have a we have a two we have a two more days. If you allow me, uh, I have, I have promised to finish it in time. No, just one comment. That is, I think I must compliment the uh, head of the department or chairman of the department of SV Medical College, Bikaner, that uh, they are doing good job and they must continue that. But they have done extremely. They have contributed. They have lift the face of this particular contest. Only problem yeah. is that uh, they would have really worked hard for. Uh, Finding out the best possible area in the beacon air, you must be knowing uh, for the connect best possible connectivity and the presentation, sir. Otherwise, I really tell you, I'm very much excited to listen all these presenters because I have gone through their presentations all of time as they have submitted it. Probably because of some audio quality, uh, we are facing so much of problem. But still, I congratulate, I thank you all those people, uh, them to submit these uh, varieties of uh, subjects for this contest. It, with that, uh, I am handing over to Dr. Chawla, sir. Thank you, Anil. Uh, first, on behalf of uh, Honorary Secretary, the Raji Society of India, Dr. Keshav Murthy, he has uh, some urgent work, he is busy in another meeting. Um, on behalf of uh, Dr. Keshav Murthy and from myself, a uh, lot of congratulations to all the presenters for the hard work and the mentors also who has put in a, a, a great effort to make all the uh, presentations today very high quality. And, and a, 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 what you can say, uh, some of the presentations were uh, something like I was revisiting those surgeries, which we have lost in our, in our hospital to the pediatric surgery. An excellent work. And I am making these comments. I, I believe that uh, judges have already marked their presentation. Before that, we should not be um, uh, giving uh, compliments to the presenters, uh, uh, not to make the judges biased. But uh, definitely, uh, 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 very good presentations today. And um, I learned a lot from the few surgeries which I have, which I am not doing at present now. Um, now, for quick closing remarks, over to Dr. Rajiv sir, and then we wind Thank up. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Arun Chavla. I'll not take much time on behalf of Indian School of Urology and USI. I'm thankful to each and every uh, presenter first, and uh, the mentors and uh, and their, their the experts, and also the whole team of uh, Dr. Neil Takwani uh, for uh, beautifully coordinating uh, and uh, uh, guiding uh, the whole program through halfway. And we have two more pro uh, programs, two more episodes left of this competition. It is going very well. Congratulations to all of you. And good night for the time being. And uh, we will meet again in the third episode uh, with Bye the other two night, girls. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, good sir. Uh, Sud, sir, good night. Goodbye. And see Thank you tomorrow you. Bye -bye. at 6 30. All uh, residents are requested to join at 6 30. All experts and mentors are requested to join by 6 40. And we will be uh, starting sharp at 7 o'clock and we'll try to finish at 9 o'clock. Tomorrow we have only five presentations. We'll take some liberty to interact with our champions of pediatric urology uh, uh, to utilize that particular time. Uh, Thank you very much once again to join and goodbye. Uh, good night. And uh, uh, Prasanna, we missed you. We want to have you for a uh, little longer. Uh, but uh, anyway, tomorrow, right? We have uh, a I'll, uh, I'll, I'll mention thanks to Navneet uh, and uh, the office. Yeah, of definitely. The See, office that is, that, that he is, is coordinating uh, so exceedingly well and is putting a lot of effort, making right. brochure and forming and putting into the group and uh, disseminating uh, all the information. A good sir, job. Sir. And, uh, thanks, Navneet. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I did at least uh, that in the, in the even in the very beginning. But, uh, 
again it is my uh, humble duty to say thank you to all those who are supporting this meeting thank you very much goodbye thank you thank goodbye you so much.